good evening to all of you. Uh, thank you very much for coming uh, physically and joining online for this uh, important event today. Uh, we are going to have uh, a public lecture on uh, untold story of rolling stock maintenance in Sri Lankan railway. So uh, today, uh, the uh, the lecture will be public lecture will be delivered by engineer Kirti Keva Vitarna, who's the chief engineer in uh, Sri Lankan Railway Department. And uh, engineer Kirti uh, graduated from University of Moratua uh, with uh, BSc honors in mechanical engineering. He had worked in private sector in Malaysian based company providing air conditioner consultant service before uh, joining railway. Uh, he started his career uh, at Sri Lankan Railway at 1990s and uh, with more than uh, 30 years of experience, uh, he had gained uh, immense uh, knowledge uh, and come to the topmost position in uh, mechanical engineering and serving our nation uh, in providing uh, uh, most reliable uh, service uh, in uh, maintenance of uh, uh, passenger service and goods uh, with the services available in the country. So uh, he he completed his uh, MBA from Open University of Sri Lanka. Also uh, excelled in administration skill and leadership skill by being a good team leader and. Uh, uh, we had a great uh, field visit to uh, railway department and so how the mechanical engineering concepts are really uh, applied and uh, used for uh, our own railway system where when the country was not having enough foreign exchange to buy the spare parts they they were innovative enough to have their own foundries and uh, uh, all the workshop running to generate necessary spare parts for the uh, locomotives and uh, with uh, with that visit i decided mr kirti deserve a uh, public lecture in isl where uh, his knowledge his uh, dedication and his leadership should be uh, outspoken to the uh, total engineering community in the country so with that uh, short note, I invite Mr. Engineer Kirti uh, to uh, come and deliver this uh, public uh, lecture on uh, untold story of uh, rolling stock maintenance in Sri Lankan railways. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nagarath, uh, Chairman, uh, Security Section of Committee, and uh, members of the ISL, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today, uh, uh, I am here to uh, share my experience related to the maintenance of rolling stock, uh, specifically as a Chief Mechanical Engineer of Sri Lanka Railway. This uh, presentation is mostly related to maintenance activities related to CME Ratnana workshop. Actually, that idea of this presentation was initiated during the, uh, the visit of ISL uh, the members to my workshop. And uh, they were, I think, show their interest to share the, the, the technical know-how and the, the difficulties we are facing and the achievements we met during recent past period. Then, uh, uh, Ratnana workshop is basically for uh, heavy maintenance and uh, heavy electrical repairs, as well as maintenance of heavy equipments. O almost all the rolling stocks and heavy equipments and electrical installations are maintained by uh, Sri Lanka Railway Ratnana workshop. It consists of around maybe 3,500 Workforce now, but currently we are having 2,200, and uh, maybe that uh, altogether engineers and 
सीनियर टेक्निकल स्टाफ में भी अराउंड हंड्रेड देन बट व्हेन आई थिंक वी वी टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस मेंटेनेंस फैसिलिटी दैट फ्रीक्वेंटली वी वी आर हैविंग सम काइंड ऑफ मेबी क्रिटिसिज्म स्पेशली फ्रॉम माय जनरल पब्लिक रिगार्डिंग द द द द productivity and efficiency of the activities that we are following uh, in this discussion i am uh, going to explain uh, what you can see there and actually i am going to explain the the reasons and the 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 things behind these maybe observations that i am anyway i am not going to justify any of these maybe organizational or individual weaknesses and uh, actually uh, and there, there are all uh, yeah. but everyone should understand the complexity of the work we are uh, performing in our mental specialty and the, the the skills and the knowledge required for carry out this uh, vast uh, complex work there in general the railway maintenance workshops are generally little bit uh, i think it is slow and flexible when co compared with normal other production and manufacturing plants available so let's say that maybe we have garment factory or maybe some manufacturing plant they are having when we when you compare with this two facilities that you can see some kind of a bit different our technical people always but anyway but our technical people in especially in ratmalana and all, as well as the other places that show they are prepared just to act fast and with some product good productivity when situation demand and ready to deliver the outputs under uh, maybe severe conditions then uh, i start my presentation from there here we are basically discussing three major topics under the the the, the roof of the cm ratnal workshop we are basically performing these three major tasks maintenance of existing rolling stocks rehabilitation or modification of rolling stocks with uh, capacity and quality improvements and introduction of new rolling stocks these three are the main tasks we are given when we think about this maintenance of rolling stock it basically consists of these activities right repair save repairs and preventive maintenance practices that uh, while doing these things under this maintenance of rolling stock we are having this we are having this uh, these are the challenges we are facing that this uh, limitation of funds lack of reliable and qualified local suppliers these are the issues and high lead time for spare parts lack of training staff these are the basically the constraints we have then the i extract this from uh, the action plan 2022 actually these are the figures that major So that, that major targets that I think for 2022 uh, that uh, outputs actually this is not the actually this is 25 percent less than normal uh, possible output because of the financial and labor constraints basically because of the financial constraints because we are given less funds for this that year. then uh, this is some kind of maybe regular things are we are following cases that 
repairing of accident repairs and that maybe that after extensive use of, use of the rolling strokes, they have to do this whole thing. Normally, this type of repair might take three to six months. And sometimes it may be extended to even one year. We are having this uh, that engineering workshop and railway yard and dedicated to staff to carry out the operations. Then the, 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 the second kind of work we are performing is rehabilitation. Rehabilitation or remanufacturing or something like this. Yeah. Just maybe to improve the quality or maybe even the quantity. Sometimes we entirely change the thing. These are the well, these are the few of main things. Actually, there are some many more things you are doing, but they are main. That I think you all know that uh, we, that uh, under the, the 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 support from Tantri Trainers Limited, we are for la for last uh, four years we are conducting a, a work that to con that rehabilitation of uh, railway coaches. We up to now we have already completed two hundred fifty coaches, and another twenty one coaches are under rehabilitation. Then uh, this project was a great success. Actually, project project uh, gave given maybe two two extensions are given, and uh, I think uh, everybody everybody knows about the success story of this family project. Then the second one is uh, conversion of Romanian carriages to air brakes. That this project, because we have uh, that that we have we have five batches of Romanian coaches. Only only third and fourth batches are fit for passenger service. Then we we are used. and it is decided to convert second and second and third batch. Romanian coaches to non-passenger applications like guard van modification and all. And so we started manufacturing air brake operated and vacuum brake operated guard vans. Altogether, maybe 70 numbers inside Rakhmana workshop for railway use. That project is going on. Then uh, we are also planning to convert Ford, that originally 45 ton ADFT and type container flats to 60 ton capacity air brake operated modern container flats just to overcome the dollar crisis facing by our country because that, that these containers are planned to deliver to uh, transportation of this solid waste. Then uh, the other one is that rehabilitation of M9. Two M9 locomotives are under rehabilitation. And there are around nine M M9 DMUs are under rehabilitation. And there are some other, we are we have we are that BHO, BHO is copper wagon. We, we, we already converted around 25 copper wagons. And there are our target is to complete 40 numbers of copper wagons to railway service. It's a complete rehabilitation. These things are complete rehabilitation. Then uh, these are that, that first wagon. I think you might have seen this. That we are converting some, we, we are manufacturing some hundred, maybe wooden type train for tourism purposes. One one of these wagon is, I think, already completed. Other things are on the way. Then uh, the the. Third major task of uh, our railway workshop is to introduce new rolling stock to Sri Lanka railway and as well as the country. Depending on the, the requirement of the requirement of the passenger demand and the freight demand, we have to plan and pro plan, procure and purchase and put into these put into service these rolling stocks. 
these are the very recent these are the, the, the cases very recently handled by railway M11 locomotives and 160 ICF coaches that Indian VMU sister is Indian and uh, SPODM is Chinese and very, very recently we procured some uh, one uh, 50 ton train uh, fully automatic that may be latest type 50 ton train for Taylor Wayan Works department and another 50 ton train is on the way for motive power sub department for derailments and other breakdown recovery purposes. Then the, 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 this part of my presentation is I think I mainly focus, focused on to show you how we handle these things. What are the, the challenges? And what is the reason for these challenges and how we overcome these things? Then the challenges are then uh, when introducing a new rolling stroke, basically we have to do these activities, setting the requirement and this preparation of scope of work. That is the main, main important thing. If we if we are unable to do this. Uh, the setting of these things and preparing the correct scope, that everything will, I think, may, may go wrong. The, the identification of the requirement is the most important thing. And then we have to prepare, prepare conceptual drawings because conceptual drawings will the supplier and the, the manufacturer, that I mean that uh, that user and the manufacturer both should be agreed to the drawings. Normally, rolling stock manufacturer prepare their own conceptual drawings, then they submit them into Sri Lanka Railway for the approval. Then our engineers are maybe carefully go through these things and given the approach. It is a very complicated process which needs sort of experience and knowledge. Then once the production is started, when we, I mean that new rolling stock, then the next thing is to stage inspection. During the production stages and before the shipment, we have to carry out our inspection. Basically, it is done by Sri Lankan Railway engineers. It is a very, maybe, demanding job, which needs a lot of theoretical and practical, theoretical knowledge and practical experience. And uh, then once the rolling stocks are maybe imported to Sri Lanka, then we have to accept these things, unload from the harbor and bring it to the Rathmalana workshop, and then we have to commission it. Then we have to perform static and dynamic testing. And then uh, we have to identify any, are there any design or manufacturing defects, material problems. We have to identify all these things. And then uh, during the warranty period, we have to follow up the warranty activities because we, we have to anyhow tackle all the issues related to design, manufacturing, and material. If we miss this opportunity, this period, then there will be a big headache to the railway because that no one is, I think, that supplier is not responsible. We have to handle it our own. Then, while performing this uh, this critical task, I mean that that commissioning and all this that introduction of new rolling stocks. Then, Then I think through my experience in the railway field, I have identified two different sets of weaknesses, in, especially in our organization. 
it can be categorized in two categories under organizational weaknesses and individual weaknesses. We have to overcome these things during the, the process of maybe commissioning and putting into the commercial service. That once we, if we take these organizational weaknesses, the lack of documentation and procedures, uh, and the, the, the one is lack of dele delegation of authority, delay decision making, which, is, which are common to the common to government organizations inherently. I think we can't help much. Then uh, the, the long chain of command structure. Difficulty that the last one is the most critical thing. Difficulty in convincing technical and engineering aspects to higher authority. Sometimes I have to use my maybe some non-acceptable <laughs> level. You know, we have to force them. He sometimes threatened. <laughs> then people very difficult to convince people. You know. <laughs> then there are some individual weaknesses. We all have these things. Then lack of know-how. Because some there are or everybody is not equal to maybe everybody are if people are different, there are different, different levels, different different experience level, different education level, attitudes, and you know, then lack of know-how is a major issue. Especially when a lot of seniors leave the organization, migrated, go for some other <laughs> higher paid jobs, then we have to work with junior young people, those who have maybe less experience. Then the, the other thing is lack of team spirit. There are instances, everybody, everybody may not work as same. Then weakness in leadership skills. No sense of ownership. That is the most important thing. Generally, in government sector, nobody is going to get the ownership. But fortunately, in railway, there are people. Sometimes people ask us, why you are so much maybe worried about these things? Just do your job and go away. Less work, no problem, no, <laughs> you know, that is so. <laughs> very, very, very later, I'm going to have to get that. Then, but uh, that, attitude, that attitude will not do the things right. Then sense of responsibility, sense of ownership. Sense of ownership is the most important thing. But I think Ratman, unfortunately, I have, uh, I have my technical people, almost everyone except few are having this quality. Then uh, reluctant to take risks. Mind your own work attitude. Then ambiguity in this is also a major thing. Out of these, all these things, lack of ownership and ambiguity in communication. Very critical. People may not understand what I think it means in contracts, in communications, in letters. Sometimes uh, people will not. Sometimes they, even though they understand and they, they pretend to be, <laughs> you know, or sometimes they may not understand. Very difficult to convey the message. Then reluctant to create criticism. But that last thing is, I think, as a newer thing, not only that all technical and other things, but people involved in this government sector business prepared to have this quality. We have to face a lot of bad news, social media attack and these things. I have faced a lot of things, but survived. <laughs> okay. then it, is a, it is a kind of quality we need. Okay. 
Then, uh, when we consider about the introduction of new rolling stock, we have already identified and implemented these things. Actually, uh, I am going to disturb you maybe that point, but we recently commissioned a lot of rolling stock, 160 coaches and 10 locomotives and maybe nine power DMUs and another six DMU sets like this from India and China and various places. But we don't have to do any kind of technical modification or alternation. Because there were a lot of complaints from various parties, from general public and from unions and some other authorities. But I can assure you, I have not done any kind of modification or alternation, which were not originally in the specification. Sometimes some component failed when we have to replace them. These types of things are there. But we didn't have to introduce some new things or omit some things like this, because our specifications and all these uh, conceptual drawings were perfect. But what we have to do is, we have to maybe listen to some other, maybe some aesthetic things, some maybe to just to maybe improve the quality of the seat or something like this. But nothing technical. I mean that operational things, because our, this, our specifications and our uh, Concept, the approved conceptual drawings and our, that these things were so refined, but we don't have to do any adjustments because they were maybe we, as it is, we have to, we, we, are, we were able to put them into service. Then that is because we have already introduced these things the most appropriate technology for that particular application and standardization of brake system and AC AC traction air suspension, GPS enabled, and passenger information systems, and train safety, train light, and hotel loads that I mean that in, model, in, latest, in latest that imported power sets, you, you can have maybe any kind of restaurant facility and all these things are there. Then headlight systems, modern that, modern, that very recently imported locomotives are having very bright and very, maybe very good uh, headlight system, but it is a headache to me because that our people need that all these all locomotives also need to be converted to that. Then now they are going to compare this M2 and M6, and then they they put their demand because then they they know we can have this level of illumination, and why not for all the one also? Then now, now we are in the process of converting all the locomotives into that new system. But these new headlight systems are very expensive. One headlight is worth three million, three million per one. Whereas that older one, two hundred thousand per headlight. That is the price difference. <laughs> then uh, onboard electronic fault diagnosis and train data recording. Everything is there. Almost all this new rolling stocks will have inbuilt things. It recorded everything. No escape for operating or other people. You know. Then uh, these are the things. These are the things we are going to introduce in future. We are uh, under preparation of specifications and other things these days. These are the things we are going to introduce on next, maybe next generation rolling stocks for Sri Lanka. Electro-neumatic brake systems. Currently, we have normal air brake system, pneumatic brake systems. Controlling part is also done by pneumatically. No electronics, nothing. Other, other than some small, small things. But 
we are planning to introduce electro-pneumatic means where controlling part is fully computerized or electronic. And only the application is pneumatic. And I, I, I am also planning to, in, to convert all these, all the locomotive holding stocks into this capable of these electro-pneumatic systems because that pneumatic controlling gears are very, very expensive. Let's say, take an example, a single unit fitted on a coach is 3 million pneumatic unit, but that its, its electronic version is maybe 300,000 or 400,000. Latest version, electronic version is very cheap, relatively cheap, but that all the pneumatic control unit is very, very exclusive because they have to custom build for Sri Lanka Railway. Nobody elsewhere uses these things. Then we have to convert our all, all the rolling stock also into this particular electro-pneumatic brake systems and definitely incoming maybe that future local future rolling strokes will be with electro-pneumatic. Introduction of semi-permanent couplers. And we are also that auto couplers are having so many deficiencies that sometimes you might experience when traveling on these Chinese power sets, a lot of jerk. Because there are two engines in, in front and rear. They theoretically they must be in synchronizing. Synchro, they, they must be synchronized, but there is a small speed variation. But due to this very small speed variation, and due to the play between the autocouplers, there is a some kind of jerk. It cannot be eliminated without, without removing this autocoupler unit. We are planning to introduce some suitable semi-permanent coupler for these older sets and as well as in future. In future, we definitely not go for this uh, traditional autocouplers. Then uh, wireless communication. Wireless communication, I mean that, that multiple operation and all these things should be done wirelessly. I got to say you that we already have one in locomotive with wireless multiple, multiple operation. M11 having this facility. If that unit is fitted, you can see, when you see, see the engine, that facility is there. Wirelessly connected, maybe up to three or four locomotives. Then there no need to connect wires. They're very good for freight locomotives, for freight trains, because there is no wire harness in between. Then in future, we are going for that. We, then we don't need this bunch of wires going through the system and some kind of externalization. Then any kind of locomotive can be multiplied with, with multiple operation with other. We have to do something like this. And we are also planning to introduce solar and hydrogen and other type of green energy. And we also initiated the project to convert one locomotive to hydrogen as a pilot project. And we also ran into see the possibility of skip electrification, if possible. Electri just bypass the electrification and directly go into diesel power to hydrogen. But it is still under maybe it's a big debate there. But we are in the process of analyzing this. And then uh, we need to introduce with, with the higher speeds of trains and that improved roads, we need to improve our crash protections and safety systems. In, the case, in case of maybe derailments or accidents, to minimize the damage to public, we need to introduce some new standards of uh, crash safety. And uh, definitely, with that upcoming regulations, we have to introduce rolling strokes with less noise and pollutions. Then, uh, after considering that all these things I think I have discussed, uh, what, what kind of engineer we need for our railway? It is summarized here. We need a person, technical person, who is resistant to these things. Without these qualities, 
nothing can be we cannot go forward one thing is any person in a railway like organization especially in the government sector need these qualities one is he should be able to he should not have negative he should not be motivated with negative comments and responses what we are always getting daily we are getting these type of things from newspapers from social media from our officers from other government institutes and is general public negative comments or negative response we don't have to worry about these things but we have to do our work <laughs> anyway however good we are doing we in a country like this i think anywhere in the world same we need to face negative comments and responses we have to take them up as a positive responses and we 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 want to we want to perform a better way to overcome these things the the second thing is false propaganda you, you might seen lot of propaganda going on regarding that 160 coaches even 30 numbers of coaches were held in the harbor for three months without reason but anyway then they again bring it back to my workshop within two weeks i commissioned it and put into service no complaint now all the coaches are in the service without any issue you know one and a half years wasted coaches line one and a half years on yards without running by some people those who handle this false propaganda we have to i have to go, go to the parliament two times and <laughs> and my officers are going to this bribery and corruption commission also because some union people submitted some petition there but that officer told me but the per person who put the petition didn't came for a given a statement but our officers go there and explain them the things all the allegations they put are false now now there is no any such case now no newspaper articles nothing trains are running without maybe much there are some small small warranty cases but there is no any big issues everybody knows but we during that period we have to face maybe very big criticisms and uh, negative comments even from our family members what you have done with <laughs> like this no actually i actually i got this type of feedback from my relatives and from people because after spreading on the newspapers and some of the places they believe these things because some very big people are talking like you know then the individual conflicts there is no room for conflicts because we are working under very hard and harsh conditions within the team no compromise for any <laughs> conflicts but fortunately in my workshop there is no any such cases but earlier not that it is not like so but currently that we are having very cordial relationship no nothing but i think as a general thing any technical organization like railway should not have any we cannot eliminate 100% but there should not be conflicts which will affect the performance of the organization to the at level we have to minimize these things and there there must be a method of handling conflicts without harming to the organizational functions we cannot eradicate 100% conflict free which is possible even sometimes even myself maybe sometimes <laughs> you know but anyway it should not harm the unity and the functionality the the other thing is that union i think i'm not highlighting it that threats from outside stakeholders maybe general public some unions some other people there are so many threats very big threats you must have, you might not i think in a place like this i cannot even sometimes explain there are different different level of threats coming due to various sides any any person in this organization like railway should stand should not shake 
should not take you a step down. Then misleading queries. Misleading queries. Once I think I once I observed some misleading news going on a newspaper regarding audit query. They, they, they refer to some, some audit, audit inquiry and say that there some coaches are lying there like this. Then I demanded my general manager, I need the immediate meeting with audit people. Because th that report damaged our engineers that so much because I want to, I don't want to see they, them and discourage by this type of, because then they keep away from the work. Then I am facing problem. I don't worry about these type of things. But my young engineers are reluctant to cooperate with the work. Then I explained that they, they, GMR arranged that meeting. And during that meeting, I think I explained my, my idea. They, but, but anyway, they have a discussion. <laughs> and sometimes some people told me, don't go against with these type of people because they might put some kind of maybe bad report to the parliament or somewhere. Even a very higher level person in the government sector warned me, you might get in a very big trouble if they put it into the parliament or somewhere. But because we think we have a lot of maybe what we have done maybe correctly, we have no fear to face the situation, but fortunately they understood our uh, response and they read our comments and finally we get through it. We didn't get any, maybe, uh, I mean, uh, notorious report for us. They actually, they, they go through these, the, the, all the comments that we have given. They accepted that I think we have done maybe acceptable work. Yeah. Sometimes we have to take this type of maybe aggressive type behavior because that calm and quiet response will not do all the way, all the right, you know. Then, uh, the, the other headache is how to handle nonsense non response to suppliers. Some people, when one, once we place the order, they will take 18 months, 24 months to deliver. You know, some, some people, there are some people, once, once, once they supply the unit, they will not deliver spare parts. And there is no any maybe response for warranty services. There are things like this from local market as well as foreign market. But we cannot maybe, we cannot go, maybe, we have to handle the situation amicably. It is a different kind of skill. Sometimes we have to be soft, sometimes we have to be hard, but we should not break the elastic. It should not go to the level of conflicts. It is an art of handling people. I think I am maybe <laughs> a little bit good about this thing. That is why I think that one of the success we have, we, we manage to maintain the relationship while pressurizing them to perform satisfactorily. It is a kind of art. It's not a science. It's handling people. You know, then that skill must be there. Without that skill, definitely there will be a lot of conflicts, arguments, and our situation become very, very, maybe very much, very worse. It, it will go to dead end. You should never allow anybody to go to dead end because that will not serve the purpose. But our purpose is to have smooth maintenance activities and put the rolling stock into the service and serve the people. Not to, uh, <laughs> you know, then. The other thing is there are a lot of ambiguity in work. Contract itself might be a, a big ambiguity. <laughs> there are no some particular way, you know, in some terms, because we define it in some particular way and supplier will define it in other way. And somehow maybe that audit and other people will understand it in a different way, you know, then these type of things are there. Even uh, the weight of the locomotive, height of the locomotive, <laughs> these things are also, I think we have a lot of problems. The audit said it should be like this. And the supplier said another thing. <laughs> we think how, you know, then 
handling these things need a lot of flexibility and understanding and caring you know because we cannot have 100% accurate documentation or anything or even product any engineering product will not be 100% we have to accept this engineering is not 100% no mathematics uh, science uh, mathematics may be 100% engineering is not 100% you know that everybody knows engineering is not 100% it is it is it is kind of maybe practical it it may be not seven, even 50% <laughs> in some cases it may be 70% 80% 90% 99% like this then the ambiguity is always there handling ambiguity is a must then uh, facing newspapers and social media then uh, i think i have a lot of friends friends in media circles and other places they are in difficult times they are giving me a lot of support even under heavy criticism and other maybe attacking and pro propaganda i was able to survive especially under when we handling this temple project because it is a, 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 a kind of maybe public private partnership almost all the unions were against then we have to carefully get the support from media i learned from them then during this last commissioning period there were a lot of propaganda and maybe things but most of the media friends helped us even though they put that negative news also <laughs> because of their marketing strategy but they personally know that 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 propaganda is not right and then they put they balance the news sometimes sometimes that was there but we need very close relationship and uh, how to have we because we, we we have we need a way to convey our message to the public because finally that parliament or public or maybe that audit they will decide the thing we have to convince them whatever loudly we speak they will not believe we need some kind of support may lobbies for our side also then handling news papers and electronic media and social media in the social media also there are so many railway fans giving lot of support to us there are maybe different different people but there are maybe sizable community in the social media supporting railway especially ratman and other friends some fans thanks for this maybe people we were able to survive under difficult situations but we have to encourage them we have to make them understand make them knowledgeable and we have we are having very close relationship with them then these are the traits or qualities i think which need to perform our duties at ratmalana railway workshop as well as maybe other places especially in government sector person this is the requirement thank you very much thank you engineer kirti for your valuable uh, presentation on uh, rolling stock maintenance in sri lanka i think uh, it's one of the uh, challenging jobs in sri lanka we have a lot of public will depend on the railway transport due to the cost effectiveness and uh, the convenience and a uh, uh, lot of uh, advantages they have uh, in railway but we, we we as mechanical engineers know that uh, railway maintaining a railway system with uh, current uh, communication networks people uh, social media would be quite difficult because people everybody won't understand the <clears throat> technical requirement of it for example i can tell there was a uh, there was a news about uh, engine being uh, uh disconnected from the coaches and running 150 uh, meters uh, from the uh, rail they don't understand when 
coach kind of break immediately. They require certain distance to uh, uh, apply the break and stop, right? Something of that nature. It's very difficult to explain to sometime media, right? So anyway, we are, we are really happy that uh, the railway is in good hands and uh, there are dedicated engineers who are working there to get the system on right direction. And uh, we had seen the plans for the future. And we hope uh, we could build a good rail network that will outrun the public transport uh, on the roads uh, and uh, help to develop the country. So now I will open the uh, forum for question and uh, answer session. So we will have a session for the engineers here. So you can uh, ask any question you would like to clarify from Ms. Keithy and uh, get necessary explanations. Can I, can I question, Ruan? Yeah, yeah, I'm suggesting you go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to start with for organizing this lecture and much yeah. more to uh, Vitarna for a fantastic lecture and also the, the substance behind. It's a bit of a ray of sunshine for us in the you know gloomy situation in Sri Lanka. So my... Uh, in fact, uh, gratitude to Mr. Hewitt Arna for, you know, in spite of all the difficulties that we all face to do so much. And uh, Engineer Kirti, all the weaknesses that you mentioned is common to all of us in Sri Lanka. Thank you. So, <laughs> let that not be a deterrent for you to do what you are continuing to do. But uh, on the other hand, I also appreciate very much the problems we are having with the media. You know, we hear only the negative. Mm -hmm. So I would like to suggest two things. One is, of course, you need to uh, be, you must respond to anything that comes on this thing. So maybe you are not allowed to do it yourself, but you might talk to your superiors, GM, and say, have a system, PR system, where nothing goes unresponded. You see, whatever comes on this thing, the, the department must respond to that. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, much more positive thing I would like to request you to do is you know, mm -hmm. sh show the world, show the country what you have done, what you are showing us today. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing, particularly the numbers you have quoted. You see, you can also uh, relate them to the actual cost savings for Sri Lanka in dollar terms too. You see, that is the kind of positive thing that uh, you could do, which will uh, certainly help you in, in your work and also change the perception of the people on railway. You know, railway is a fantastic place. And of course, we will always say that more can be done, but you are on the right path. So we are very pleased to hear you. This. And my suggestion to you is to see, explore how that can be done and see what you have showed us today, how that can be go out into the public. That I don't think anybody will object to us saying that. So that's my suggestion to you, Keith. Thank you very much. And this is most encouraging. Yeah. yeah, actually, we have to do a lot of work to bring this to the public. I think uh, IESL can do a lot of things because as a government officer, sometimes we have our own limitations. Yeah, yeah. 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 But a uh, place like this, I think I can speak like this, but I am not going to speak this <laughs> speech on some other, maybe, office or some other. Maybe minister somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we have our own. I think ISL can do a lot of things. Oh, oh yes, yes. Yeah, but yeah. nothing to prevent you from make public what you have achieved. I don't think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sir. Yeah. So that that is the best way of uh, overcoming most of the problems. You see, not not yes, really yes, responding. Sir. You see. Anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. The online uh, members also can raise their question here, so please. please okay, thank you. Uh, 
I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes. Please. I am Dr. Gunasekara, uh, yes. I was former Additional Managing Director, Sri Lanka Ports Authority, and now retired and working at Port of Hambantota. First, yes, let me congratulate for your uh, excellent uh, lecture, which covered mainly the challenging issues in maintaining the rolling stock. And most of the uh, things that you described are uh, unknown to even the engineering community, leave alone the general public. So it's obvious that you are going through a challenging period to keep the uh, railway services up to standard and meet the expectations of the public. Then coming on to a uh, few technical things you mentioned. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned that you are going to convert the wired hardwired system to a wireless system, uh, which uh, I, in my experience, uh, I would suggest you uh, check, uh, do the uh, field test and trials mm -hmm. because the trains are running all over the country, going mm -hmm. through tunnels, and uh, working in uh, bad uh, weather conditions. So lots of valuable lives and also valuable goods are being transported in train service. So mm -hmm. this is the area you have to uh, very carefully look at when you go for wireless system. Yes, sir. Then uh, the natural question anybody would ask is, how soon we would see the railway electrification in the country, which uh, is I think very long, which has a very long history and we have seen many uh, public lectures and presentations and plans, but still I think it is uh, long overdue. The third yes. point that I want to share with you is the Bribery and uh, Corruption Commission. Mm -hmm. As a Ports Authority senior engineer, I too have uh, gone to Bribery and Corruption on number of occasions, even after my retirement, the funniest part of it is that uh, the party who made this allegation against senior engineers in the Ports Authority was a former director of the Ports Authority and a, uh, he was a trade union leader. So the allegation he made was on the price that he paid for certain uh, ship to shore cranes, the type of cranes which you see uh, from golf air screen when you look at look towards the uh, Colombo port. And funniest, is. Part of it is, funniest part of it is that he was a member of the SLPA board. At the time, the decision was made to purchase these cranes at the price. So having given his consent, approval, signature, everything to purchase these cranes, he few months later went to bribery and corruption and uh, made the allegation that the price paid is too high. So this is the type of uh, people when you are working with unions, when you are the, the people who are uh, leading unions, uh, their mindset. So. Next thing is the audit queries. Of course, uh, I would like my experience is audit queries. If auditors make their language uh, more, uh, I mean, uh, inquisitive than making direct allegations, it would serve much better. And even uh, it is easier for the parties who respond to these uh, allegations to answer. So, with that, I'll conclude my questions. Thank you very much once again. Okay, thank you, sir. That uh, regarding your uh, first question, this uh, that we did, that uh, wireless communication system. Actually, we already have one locomotive with this system because Indian Railway already using this system on their locomotives, especially for freight locomotives. When long freight loads are attached and then locomotives are put in between, there is no way of wired communication network available. Then they use wireless communication through radio signals, but I am not very much uh, aware about this, uh, the frequency and all, but that, that particular facility is given with our M11 locomotive, but we are yeah. not using 
currently, but that technology is, I think, proven. And Indian Railway extensively used this facility. And uh, because that, uh, if, if, we, if we go for this uh, wireless communication, then there is a, there is a, there, there are a very big flexibilities there. Then we can connect anything with anything, any that multiple locomotive application is possible with minimum, uh, maybe that with lot of flexibility. But uh, sure, sir, that I think if we go for this passenger safety and that, that the safety of the property must be must be a uh, prime uh, maybe concern. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let me yeah. share my point once again. Yes, uh, because uh, the the railways are running through tunnels yeah, and yeah, also yeah. Bad, bad weather conditions. So that is also something like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and to add my point, you know this uh, Titanic uh, submersible which was uh, uh, imploded while on a mission to see the Titanic uh, debris. So it had a Bluetooth communication system inside. So there was a question whether that communication is well proven. So these are technical issues that when you apply technology in different or uh, uh, environmental conditions, you will have to be very careful about. Okay, in sir. Cases, I made yeah, my yeah. point. We will take all the precautions if you are going to do this. But I think uh, since we already have uh, what, one set of locomotives with this uh, system, maybe future we are we are planning to have some kind of trials. Then we can see. Then uh, that regarding the electrification, that electrification is a dream for railway as well as the <laughs> public. But uh, uh, that since that electrification delayed so much. But there are some new trends are coming in the world, in especially in European countries and some other, maybe uh, Korea and uh, China, they are testing hydrogen powered locomotives. But there is a very big advantage if we go for hydrogen, but it's, even though it is still not mature enough for commercial service, we don't need this uh, power lines and uh, grids and uh, the power station and any, anything. Then we can eliminate these things, but still train will run on electricity because electricity is generated inside the locomotive using hydrogen. But we yeah. are searching on this topic uh, uh, because that we already delayed our electrification. We have to maybe uh, think critically uh, whether we go for electrification or maybe a certain extent uh, go for electrification plus hydrogen. Because yeah, uh, your point is, yeah, uh, your point is, yeah, yes, your point is well taken. Actually, if you have yeah, electricity yeah. generation on board yeah. the train itself, yeah. then the hassle of connecting national grid power to that locomotive uh, is eliminated. Well taken. Thank you. Sure. Then uh, the, we have a very big potential of preparing green hydrogen using wind power and solar power. Uh, some uh, people are, I think, interested on it, and we are, we are, we have started our research work. Uh, Good. And I think future we will, we can see some progress on this. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Thank in, you. Yeah, uh, we have uh, five messages on chat box. One is uh, yeah. one question: uh, Do you have plan to improve the uh, signaling system together with uh, uh, turnout arrangement? Uh, there are a lot of problems in existing turnout arrangements. Actually, uh, I am not the expert in signal system, but I think I, uh, there, there might be, uh, because our, our Kalamu central signal system is very much outdated system, definitely there will be a, a new system coming. And this new system should have all these facility, I think. But I think I am not in a position to maybe give a detailed answer because I am a mechanical engineer <laughs> and uh, I have very limited uh, uh, knowledge in uh, signaling. And uh, but most of our locomotives are, are capable of uh, operating with onboard signals if required. Mo most of our latest locomotives purchased uh, can be easily converted to uh, work with onboard signals. And the second question is from a research engineer at Arthasi Clark Institute. 
uh, so modern technology and doing many research on modern railway systems such future railway mobile communication system so his question is not very clear is anyway it's about the future railway mobile communication system it's a railway mobile communication system do you have any plan to do you have any plan to implement the positive train control uh, system or any other electric hazard monitoring system i think it's related to the first one uh, yeah 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 do you have any Actually, uh, the train, uh, the, these problems, I think I am not a signal engineer, uh, but I have very limited knowledge in this signal area. Then uh, uh, definitely then Sri Lanka Railway will have, uh, in future, when the, if electrification is, I think, implemented, we need to go for onboard signals with maybe a uh, lot of facilities with a uh, lot of maybe uh, safety features, but I think uh, I will uh, I will arrange to answer you through my signal engineers. Maybe in uh, I think maybe personally because I don't have expertise to answer this question. Yeah, and uh, I would have a question for engineer Kirti. Basically, uh, uh, current our railway system is majorly catering for passenger needs. Yes. So. Can we have this modified to uh, our goods transport and other things where you can get a lucrative, you can, you can get many trucks and lorries out of the road and create some uh, advantage for the country. Do you have such plans, Ajiri uh, Yes, sir. Actually, uh, that, uh, currently we have transporting around 50% uh, of the petroleum throughout the country. We can easily uh, increase this maybe up to maybe 75%. Another, another 25% increase is very possible with some minimum adjustments. And uh, as well as that uh, transportation, that bulk transportation, that something like power simming and uh, the early riser, these type of things can be very easily transported on railway. But I think currently also we are transporting that flower from. Pilgomri to Palambu, Prima. We have an agreement with Prima, and uh, maybe also we have agreements with uh, the coal transportation when the coals are imported for our electrical power, that product uh, we, we We can transport them from maybe from Pilgomri to uh, that uh, yeah. area, yeah. and these are things are there. But the thing is that, uh, but that freight transportation is a debatable issue. Even uh, that, I think, with the introduction of the highway system, always it is there will be a big competition. If the roads are good and well connected, that is a very big threat to rail transportation. That in India also that happens. That even though Indian railway is earlier a profitable entity, but now that they are train business, half of the train business goes to trucking because of the introduction of new highway system in India. And railway heavily suffered. But it is a very debatable issue whether we can have a, maybe, but definitely that bulk transportation and maybe some kind of maybe raw material and these kind of things, definitely railway is a uh, good operator. But, but at the small scale transportation, that we have to compete with highway system and road transportation. But this is this is the very still very debatable issue. But we need a, 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 a maybe a comprehensive analysis to decide what is what are maybe a beneficial for railway and what, what should go to the road network because both are maybe the asset of our country. <laughs> At the very least. But we have to we have to decide. Which section is as a minimum for railway? Which kind of uh, train transport is I think good for? 
highways and railways. These are the things now. Yeah. And this discussion is, I think, is still not happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, one final question. Uh, this is about the uh, light railway project. So everybody is very much interested in light railway projects. So can you tell us the view from uh, railway department, the proposed light railway project, uh, whether it will be implemented soon and uh, what would be the benefits that our country would get uh, as per your understanding of project development? As a member of the heavy railway international <laughs> sector person, but heavy railway, the right Sri Lanka railway is, uh, is basically used for uh, between cities and maybe intercity and maybe some long distance trains and maybe for some, even sometimes for suburban service. Light rails for inside the city or maybe some commuter type service between some, uh, maybe some, between two points, some maybe some 10, 15 kilometers away. And normally people, there is, with minimum facility, with minimum seating facility, a lot of standing people and uh, quick access and easy getting and getting out facility like this. But normally, that like LRT is so normally with load, axle load, maybe from maybe nine tons or maybe 10 to or something like this. But our railway are maybe some 16 tons, 18 tons, 21 tons axle load. Then our tracks are also heavy. That it, I think investing on on the main line train service to cater this inner city transportation is I think less stage of money because that we have it needs a lot of fuel it needs a lot of emission and a lot of noise pollution etc. But inner city transportation must be like LRT or something like this maybe monorail and these type of things. Then but our our country needs. This type of system integrated with the mainline railway and our maybe even some bus, system, bus transportation system and every person in the in, in the city should be able to travel anywhere using maybe a suitable means from point A to B. That is the thing. But I think light rail or maybe LRT system is a must because it has maybe low noise, low emission, easy to access, no cost, no maintenance cost, etc. Whereas that the heavy railways are for intercity or maybe suburban transportation. Thank you. Okay. If that not, uh, okay, I have two chat box. Uh, I would like, uh, it's from Engineer Parag Kamajai Singh. I would like to propose a series of video articles on social media.